We pray for especially for our police officers, so many that have lost their lives, that you would be with their families and give them comfort. And now here we are at Dover International Speedway, and we ask you now for a great race, for a safe race. We pray in Christ's name, amen, shalom. Byron and Menard having a good battle for 19th place. You know, for uh, Kyle Busch, maybe it's a change of season that's needed. He's won here in the fall. He has a lot of top tens in the fall. In the spring race at Dover, Kyle Busch has averaged really roll. Chase Elliott's never finished out of the top five at Dover, and that puts him in some pretty excellent company. Led a bunch of laps here last fall, over 100. But got passed for the win with two to go, Vince. Got a little snug right now for the nine. Not too bad, but just a little snug for his liking. It actually turned pretty well on that front first run. And you guys mentioned Jimmy Johnson, and it's hard not with all the success that Hendrick Motorsports has had with Jimmy and Jeff included to not be a team that leans on that expertise when you come here. Maybe one of the reasons why Chase Elliott always seems to have been good here in his young career. Just before the stage ended, Kevin Harvick lapped A.J. Allmendinger, and he is the free pass car. So that means the Truex chose not to pit and is taking the wave around along with Alex Bowman, uh, Cody Ware, Eric Jones, Kyle Larson, and Matt DiBenedetto are all taking the wave around. Yeah, and Kyle Busch, of course, he had started with that uncontrolled tire. He had a problem. Or right, Kurt Busch, I'm sorry. So restarting at the back, Newman and Hamlin, because they pitted when pit road closed with two laps to go in stage one. So of those wave around cars, only Truex gets back onto the lead lap. So we will restart with 20 lead lap cars. We're told William Byron had an uncontrolled tire on his pit stop. That's why he has restarted out back. Still on the lead lap. He's about to get passed by William Byron right now. Remember, Byron had a pit road penalty issue, had to restart 20th. Yeah, I was thinking I saw William Byron behind Denny Hamlin. I was like, hey, he's going to learn a lot here at Dover today in a cup car ride behind one of the best out there. Then he went and passed him. Well, you'll see him in his mirror. <laughs> and I know I've talked many times about longtime sponsor of mine, DuPont, being up the road in Wilmington. Exalta, they're right uh, close by also in Philadelphia. Welcome back to Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series racing from Dover. That's the monster bridge that DuPont built over turn number three, where you can be served and look right out at the cars rushing right below. I tell you, that'll rattle your cage, too. They go under that thing. That's a VIP suite. That's not a pedestrian bridge. I think that's the coolest seat in all of NASCAR right there. Yeah. Certainly the most leader. unique one. So a lot at stake right here as Kevin Harvick got a big run on William Byron down the back stretch. Ricky Stenhouse just ahead. Last car on the lead lap now. Yeah, once you give Kevin Harvick that inside lane, there's no holding him back. His car's rolling around the bottom so good. Pit road is closed with two to go in stage two. You know, Eric Jones was not happy to see that pass made. No, but you know what? The 20 car, if he can get back around. And he's working hard here, to do it. He, get, he would be in a free, uh, free pass. Yikes. Lap and a half to go, a little bump. <laughs> Harvick trying to catch Stenhouse, might not do it. This might have to get settled between last year's Rookie of the Year and this year's top rookie. Yeah, they're fighting hard, man. Eric Jones, William Byron, I mean, that's a battle for the position. They made contact, but, but Byron they cleared it. on. Byron cleared it. And this is for the free pass. Harvick's going to win the stage. Who's going to get the right to come around and get back on the lead lap? William Byron. That was a fight. 15 lead lap cars back to William Byron, who won that great battle with Eric Jones to come to the green and white flag to end stage two. And you can see under caution here, these Goodyear tires pick up all that rubber. So going to go whole, through this whole sequence again with it right on. How about some uh, Clint Boyer radio? That's always entertaining. 
things that must not be under the watchful eyes of experts like you and NASCAR. Name that line. My favorite movie, Six Pack. You think Kenny Rogers? Kenny's a man. No in the hold of. <laughs> well, that's the gambler. I, I hope that was during <laughs> caution. I, I, it yeah, I, and it was. You and me both. <laughs> it was. I was going to say, what does that have to do with the race? Does it matter? <laughs> Not with Boyer, it doesn't. You never know where he's going to go. <laughs> has quietly been turning in some impressive numbers. In fact, if you look at the last seven races, four times he has finished 15th or better. You're currently running in the 16th position. How would you grade your progress so far? Everyone has expectations when the season begins. Yeah, I mean, I think, honestly, for us, we, we want to run where our teammates are running. Uh, I feel like we're a couple spots off that today. We had to go to the back a couple times, but uh, just trying to find kind of the feel that we want to have so far. <laughs> this guy. Uh, but mainly, I feel like we're, we're pretty close. Um, we just got to go back green and make a couple adjustments. It's, it's been tough all day. We've had to go to the back, and it's really tough to come back from that here. So uh, we'll see what happens once we get dried up here and go back. When you look at the notebook on William Byron, you know, quickly instant success in the trucks. I believe you won your fourth race out. Uh, not that much longer as far as Xfinity goes too. What do you attribute just you getting up to speed so quickly? I think honestly, you got to have that chemistry with your race team. Um, that's something I'm still trying to kind of establish. I think our guys have done a really good job of, of getting closer each week. And I feel like we're, we're closer each time we come back uh, to a racetrack. So. It's, uh, it's been fun this weekend. This is a really tough racetrack as a rookie, I feel like. Tougher than I kind of expected. I uh, really enjoyed Richmond. That was a lot of fun. And I feel like hopefully we get back going green here and can pick off a few more guys. So uh, we'll see. But it's been a solid day. It's just a long day here. Rookie looking very solid so far, running 16th, Chris. All right, thank you, Matt. And the jet dryers are out. Those two. Fords have dominated. Boyer, your leader, followed by Harvick. 80 laps to go under a red flag, but the rain has let up here in Dover. Key to who gets away first. Well, a lot of the fans. Jeff still has a lot of yeah. fans here. He was <laughs> Thank you. inducted into the Tracks Wall of Fame over at Miles the Monster here the other day. And <laughs> now, now that's I, a dedicated fan. I like that. There's just no describing that, is there? <laughs> Not really. Great fans uh, here at Dover. Ice in the pit crew. I mean, they've been, you know, you're a crew chief. You've been going around saying, boys, this is money. <laughs> and get ready for the finish. It's going to be extremely impressive, William Byron. I already have been, but even more so today, if he can get that 24 car uh, into a, 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 this kind of a position, have the day that he's having right now. William Byron trying to hang on to the tail end of the lead lap after a very strong day. For his number 24. Good job, though. My, uh, uh, he, did, he does what rookies need to do. He runs every lap. He gets the experience. He gets the knowledge. He gives the crew chief the information. He'll be better when they come back. Have it. I don't care if every, you got to fight to the bitter and all the way to the bitter end. And this is something I've seen Harvick do. We saw a little bit out, uh, out of Keselowski, but Harvick's been able to do this, even racing for position for the lead, is move. Please remain standing as Master Trooper Dave Golden of the Kansas Highway Patrol offers tonight's invocation. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be here tonight. Lord, we just ask that you watch over these teams, drivers, officials, and crews. Give them a safe race tonight. Lord, we thank you for the military. We ask that you continue to watch over them and keep them safe. Bring them home to us safely. And Lord, on Mother's Day weekend, we want to lift up these ladies in our lives that mean so much to us. Thank you for their grace, their believing in us, their beauty and just give them an awesome day tomorrow. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. It's time for those most famous words in motorsports. With us tonight to give the command, please give a special welcome for this distinguished group of Vietnam veterans who are accompanied tonight by Chiefs quarterback, Patrick Mahomes and general manager of the Kansas City Chiefs, Brett Veach. Start your engines. In the Great Plains of America, NASCAR, Kansas, next.
Chris Buescher 15th. Here's William Byron 16th. And there are six Chevrolets right behind them, including Ryan Newman, Chase Elliott, Bowman, Johnson, and Allmendinger. Yeah, Mike, I, you got to know, when the, one of the greatest drivers of all time is running in the 21st position, seven-time champion, got, nine, got 83 wins, and he can't compete, he can't get up there and be in the top ten, that, that's a that's strong message right there to me. And if you ask anybody over at the 48, they'd said, well, if we knew what the problem was, we would have fixed <laughs> oh, it. They're working hard. Sure. I mean, everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, all those Chevy teams, including Ganassi and Childers and Chevrolet themselves, they're working extremely hard to try to make up that gap. Yeah, I, I think they know what the problem is. They don't know how to fix it. I think that's the problem. They know that they're lacking in downforce. They don't know how to get it, how to get downforce the other cars have. 11th place here, riding with Martin Truex. It was on this date in 2012 that Hendrick Motorsports got its 200th win. That came at Darlington. Tonight on May 12th, they're going for win number 250. And I think I remember that year as well. I think the Hendrick car struggled a lot that year, and Jimmy finally got that win at Darlington, and it seemed like it propelled them into some other wins later in the year. And we're, we're early in the season. It's not – they can get this thing turned around. I'm, everybody talks about Toyota last year. Yeah, they did a similar thing. But these Chevy teams have got to get going. they got to get going pretty quick. Down with the Hendrick Crew Chiefs this morning and just chatted with them. And, and my point-blank question to them was, do you feel like it's all arrow? And, and Alan Gustafson, Chase Elliott's crew chief, said, you know, obviously that's what everybody's pointing at because we have a new body. But he said, when you're off, you have to look under every rock that's out there. We can't just fall back on it. It's absolute 100% arrow. We have to look at everything because, mind you, I know Chase Elliott was awfully good in the playoffs last year, but Chevrolet has only won one race in the last 21 races. That would include the 10 at the end of last year. You have to go all the way back to Richmond in September, the last time Chevrolet won a non-restrictor plate race, then that was Kyle Larson at Richmond. And then, Larry, it, it, it's not like we're ganging up on the Chevrolet team. We're just looking at the numbers. We're looking at the results. And uh, and I think it's fair to the fans and to everybody in the sport that, you know, we they're, they're, they got work to do and they need to get busy. The white uniform, many years at Joe Gibbs Racing, part of their championship teams. Lugs on, he's away. William Byron is the first off pit road with two tires. Yeah. Leader on the restart because he had a tire violation on his two tire stop. The tire carrier dropped the tire, returning it to pit wall uh, from the rear of the car. And that is uh, the cause of the penalty right there. Larry, what's the ruling here? Yeah, I've got the card right here, Mike, and it says crew members must remove tires and wheels from the outside half of their assigned pit box in a controlled manner before the vehicle exits the pit box. So that rule is pretty black and white. So it looked like everything was timed well, but when that tire fell, that caused the penalty. Yeah, you can see you can see that tire changer. He's holding the uh, the pit gun and the tire, and it looked like he was trying to not step on the hose as he went around the back of the car, and then the tire hit the, the quarter panel. So on the restart, it'll be our front row starters in reverse order, Blaney and Harvick. Reminding me of his dad right now. <laughs> his dad's a sprint car driver, uh, uh, Dave Blaney, and he is up on the cushion like a dirt track racer would be. Raises an interesting question, Jeff. Which was bigger for you, winning at Sonoma or Indianapolis? Well, <laughs> I mean, you had a couple of hometowns. Yeah. No. I, listen, there was nothing. There was nothing bigger for me than that inaugural Brickyard 400. I'll I grew bet. up as a kid dreaming about racing at Indianapolis, and yes, I lived in Indiana for a, a good period of time. Yep. But it also felt really good to win in California. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> 38 to go. Kyle Larson in the lead. I think I figured it out. It's something Benny Parsons used to say when he was about to roll the dice in Vegas. Baby needs new shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's daughter, Audrey, was born on Monday. Mom, Caitlin, daughter, Audrey, doing fine. In fact, the baby arrived two weeks early. John Hunter Nemechek was scheduled to be uh, on relief duty in case uh, Kyle needed to leave for the blessed event, but now he has a son and a daughter. 
And boy, he's out front. He is, and uh, uh, he's going to run up a Hopstad, Indiana tomorrow night, Tri State Speedway, in a sprint car. That's a track I raced on years and years ago. And uh, the Helfrich family run that track, a really neat little racetrack over there near Evansville. And Kyle told me he's going to run there tomorrow night. Yeah, I'm very familiar with that track. Ran there myself in some sprint cars. Three, Elliott to the bottom this time. Harvick upstairs. Boy, he is, and he is right up against that wall, but he made the pass. Oh, oh trouble. Bang, hard, and the wall goes big, William Byron. Byron noses in Oh, heavy. Byron went in hard. Oh. Matt Kins has piled into Byron right to, uh, to the 14 car right at the end there. 24, set down here on fire. 37, the one. What a, that was a huge wreck. Chris Busher involved. You can see William moving around a little that's bit Ty there. He's out of the car now. Matt Kenseth and William Byron climbs out after an incredibly hard hit. I'm not sure what happened, but remember, William only took two tires. It looked like he got a little bit loose. They were three wide there. They will stop the cars on the back stretch. Clint Boyer makes it back to pit road. Boyer's just had a tough night all night long. So five cars are stopped in the front stretch grass and Byron on the front straightaway. Good to see he's OK. Oh boy, they're four wide there. Byron on the yeah, bottom. He just gets yeah, loose he did, underneath yeah, he just the starts spinning team. out, gets into the. Oh. Man, it just. Oh my gosh, the car almost went over. Just hooked, nosed in. How many times have we seen a car land on top of, of uh, Ryan Newman? Ryan Newman. Yeah. I mean, not, that's two or three times I can remember. Too many. Remember, he was with uh, with McMurray down at Talladega when that happened. Matt Kenseth climbs from his car. Well, He's OK. That much damage, that kind of impact, it sure is good to see William Byron climb out of that car. It is, and this is hard into Ty the outside Dillon, wall, and then it gets Dillon rammed. out of his car. Jamie McMurray has climbed from his number one. Um, Chris Bush, are moving around in his car has not yet climbed out. Huge impact. Well, let's ride with Kurt Busch and uh, our Fox Pfizer cam. 31's up there, top side slow. Inside corner, 30 spin. Come on, come on, come on. Here. Keep coming. Big wreck here. Keep coming. Boy, amazing views and amazing job getting through there. the middle one, very top, very top. Wrecking up ahead. Keep it low, 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 low. All the way on the heaters. Chris Busher has now climbed out of his car. That's good news. Everyone is out and walking away. Look at Kevin Harvick. Just missed this. Oh my, how close was that for Harvick? And for Kurt Busch also, maybe a little damage to the right side actually from the 14. I think we now know where the Golden Horseshoe went. <laughs> we do tonight. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson going by, it's down in the grass. It's a huge wreck with all these, this, this happened in the front of the field, so it involves a lot of cars, Chris Busher. Jeff, I wonder, did Byron to having just two fresh tires play into this, perhaps? It's certainly possible, but I mean, they went down in the corner three and four wide, and there's just no give at this point. You're you're pushing as hard as you can. You can see Byron comes up off that white line a little bit and is sliding, trying to save it. I think and the, finally hooks. I think the 14 being on his outside. Oh, that didn't help just, at all. It just pulled him around. We only had two tires, so you're already at a disadvantage, and then you get pulled around. Stenhouse made a nice move to get through there. Bowman also. Jimmy Johnson. And, uh, Austin Dillon on the outside. You can see Kenseth come in right at the end. Yep. Yep. Boy, that 24, though, it took a hard lick into that outside wall. There's William Byron. He's he's fine. Yeah, every driver involved whose cards came to rest on the grass or on the asphalt here has walked away. Seven cars involved and Boyer will probably be able to continue and he may be the only one of those cars who can. 
Red flag is out. Lap 253 complete. Let's go back to the previous caution. 37 laps of this race and then three in rapid succession. And it's just about it's full on risk to try to win the race or get fifth or whatever that position may be. Yeah, you just take less, Mike. Let's get a recap from Chris and Michael. 14 laps to go. Seven cars involved in the 24 of William Byron. The fact that he was able to walk away from this. Amazing. Check this monster energy visor cam out as Kurt Busch racetrack three wide. His car just got loose and around it. And William has been checked and released. First off, big hit, William. Are you OK? Yeah, that one hurt really bad, um, but I'm fine. Uh, just we took two tires there and um, just just didn't have the really couldn't get it turned on the bottom and then got sucked around at the last minute. Um, just should have been lower than that. Just couldn't couldn't rotate, just couldn't cut. So I uh, think overall we uh, we were trying to kind of push some things there and just uh, didn't work out. But, um, you know, we'll go on to wherever's next. And uh, that one definitely hardest hit I've been in, but thankful to, to be walking. So that's good. I know you guys tried two tires a few times. How did that make the handling change compared to the four tires? Yeah, I just didn't wouldn't turn on two tires and we were kind of a sitting duck there um, with with that strategy and then felt like after that we uh, we kind of you know we we're, were a pretty decent car before that but but a, a lot of guys were on different strategies so I think the one car got hung up on the top a couple guys split the middle and I think we were three or four wide and it was hard to hard to tell or judge really how much room I had to my outside so I uh, just got uh, sucked around there I guess and uh, got loose and hit the wall. Glad you're okay. Thank you. I thank you. A 20 year old in his uh, 12th race, and uh, nice to see that he's uh, okay. Restart, so we'll see how that works out. I'm a race fan before anything else. When I was seven years old, my uncles took me to Southside Speedway just outside of Richmond, Virginia. That night, Bobby Allison became my hero. The first real milestone in my career came in 1988 when I got to design the cup car for Bobby Allison at Miller Brewing Company. And the first time he drove it, he went out and won the Daytona 500. Another milestone in my career was in 1992. I was contacted to submit a new paint scheme for a young hotshot driver that became a NASCAR legend, Jeff Gordon. This was the beginning of a long and outstanding relationship with Jeff, Hendrick Motorsports, and Exalt Coding System. Once again, this relationship has brought me here for a very special project for Exalt. I was recently commissioned to complete an original painting to reveal the paint scheme to be run by Exalta's newest hot job driver, William Byron, in Darlington on September 2nd. So from one race fan to another, I present to you Hot Southern Night.
you guys begin to take their seats. We'll start with you, Jeff. What is this special tribute to Kings King mean to you? You know, obviously uh, a lot of memories for me uh, with Sam and, and going back to uh, the first time that, that I drove uh, that rainbow paint scheme in, in, in October of, uh, or maybe it's November 92 in Atlanta and then of course my rookie season 93 so um, you know it certainly changed my life forever as a race car driver and coming to Hendrick Motorsports and having uh, a paint scheme that now looking back on it was so iconic you know I, I, I now get to meet a lot of fans or, or, or sort of uh, get uh, into these conversations with longtime fans where they say, I became a fan because of this paint scheme. You know, I, I came to the racetrack, my parents brought me to the track, and I saw the brightest car out there, and I said, I want, I want to pick, you know, I want to pull for that, that driver, who's that? And so, uh, obviously also, as Sam mentioned in the video, there's a certain magic that Sam Bass brings to your race car when he designs it. We heard that, heard that with, with Bobby Allison, and I would certainly say, that was the case for me too, because not just the rainbow paint scheme, but other paint schemes that he did. Uh, we had some great success on the track. So William ought to feel pretty good about that, uh, <laughs> knowing what that's going to do for him, darling. Well, let's go to William. Obviously, a throwback paint scheme, and obviously meant a lot to Jeff. What does it mean to you? Uh, it obviously means a lot. It's uh, really special to have that paint scheme, and, and really, like Jeff was saying, the Sam Bass's touch on the car has been incredible. Just to see the flames this year and, and be able to drive that car is always special, um, and, and this is going to be even more special. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and hopefully we can bring it good success at Darlington. Uh, it obviously looks amazing, and uh, great job to, to him. And obviously, as growing up as a kid, watching Jeff in that car, there's a lot of memories there and some similarities in our age and how we started. So hopefully I can carry that on. Great. And Sam, the weather is broken. I think I may have seen a <laughs> rainbow on my way over here. Yeah. Obviously uh, a very famous story, but would you mind indulging us? Tell us the story behind the first, the very first rainbow paint. Well, you know, Ray Everham came over uh, to my shop looking for a, a birthday present for Jeff. And uh, he was, he picked out a print and he was getting ready to leave and he wanted to pay me for it. And, and I said, no, I don't want your money. I, I want you to give me a shot to design the race car for Jeff Ford. And, and I didn't really think he would do it, but he called me back in a couple weeks and said, hey, you got a shot. And so I, um, I worked on uh, three designs. I had two of them done the day it was due. And on my way driving to work, um, I kept thinking in my mind that uh, DuPont had said they wanted a rainbow of colors. They wanted the, the, the car to show that they could produce a rainbow of colors. And uh, I went back to the shop and, and started working on something and, and I knew when I got it done, if, if, if they would uh, paint it that way, it, it would definitely be different. Uh, and I thought the guys in the body shop were going to kill me when they saw it <laughs> because they knew how difficult it was going to be to paint. But uh, to their credit, um, they, they, they did it and they were so proud of it. And, and I've been so proud to have a 26 year relationship with Exalta. And, uh, and they, they do everything I've, I've ever asked them to do. And it's just an amazing relationship that uh, I, I can't say enough but to get the chance to work with Jeff for 23 years and now to extend that relationship with William I mean I, I feel very blessed a wonderful relationship and you've had a wonderful relationship with our sports so thank, thank you. you and with that we'll open it up to questions from the media please state your name and affiliation we have some past bikes and we'll start over here in the left James Jackson, the racing experts. Jeff, this question's for you. Um, what's it like for you having drivers honor you in Darlington Pro that weekend? Uh, yeah, it's cool. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I love that. I mean, I, I love that weekend. That whole, uh, you know, I, I think what Darlington has done there is just incredible. And, and so I know as a race fan, I get really excited to see what is going to come out of the garage. and. And, and it brings back the history of the sport. So, you know, I, I've moved on from driving, and, and I love the fact that I've, I've had a role 
in the history uh, of the sport. So I think Williams did an amazing job, you know, representing the 24 car. And uh, I think that, you know, to see a young, up and coming future star of our sport get behind the wheel of that rainbow paint scheme brings back a lot of memories for me. Uh, and, and I'm really proud uh, of what I accomplished in the car, but I'm proud of what he's going to accomplish in it also. William, am I didn't add to that? Yeah, I think obviously Jeff's got a huge history in the sport, and to follow that and, and be able to, I guess, kind of carry his legacy on, hopefully, and, and have success with it is my goal, and um, that's kind of my, my plan, and it's a lot of fun to, to have a chance to do that. Other questions here? Uh, I'll start with Kenny, go to Jenna. Oh, she's just waving at me. Okay, she can go ahead. Okay, Kenny. Yeah, Kenny Bruce. Sam, I don't know if I've heard you tell this, tell this story before, but what were the two paint schemes that didn't make it? <laughs> well, um, you know, one of them looked like the car was running through paint and it splashed back um, on the car. And um, uh, the other one was uh, just kind of, uh, it didn't really have the rainbow graphics, but it had the fluorescence on it. But um, hands down, I knew the minute that I did that third one that that was going to be the one. And I think they had 43, ironically, 43 drawings um, that they looked at and they chose that one from them. So it was, it was pretty cool. Right behind, Jenna. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sports. I guess for Jeff, uh, looking at where William's at in his career and at kind of the similar age to where you were when you first piloted the car, do you see some parallels now with where he's